good morning all of you and so let's thus start the business and uh, uh, first of all i would like to thank the dr reddy's management for providing this uh, auditorium for conducting this uh, workshop as well as to uh, dr k s rao and uh, uh, talks google foundation for organizing this event so my um, so my topic is like kind of an introduction to the uh, uh, pathologies to toxicology so i'll be giving an overview about uh, the pathology what we do uh, exactly in uh, pathology uh, for a uh, pathology phase of a tox toxicology study so uh, i'm going to cover broadly about the various definitions so that uh, uh, in pathology like uh, um, so definition of pathology what uh, uh, what is the implication for toxicology pathology so how we uh, um, uh, differentiate between the adverse effect non adverse effect or adaptive effect so it's, i'm going to give an overview about that apart from that so i'll be covering the role of pathology in uh, uh, drug discovery and uh, um, drug development as well as uh, um, uh, little bit about cellular response of the uh, toxic and basic histopathology findings see and also about how we interpret the pathology data comprehensively so that will give an idea about the toxicology so how to look uh, what data to look in the toxicology i mean pathology report so how to integrate the uh, pathology report into toxicology so uh, the main purpose of conducting a toxicology study is studies are to characterize the uh, inherent uh, potential toxicity of a compound under investigation and submit a comprehensive data to the regulatory uh, agency so the regulatory agency is always slow as it looks suspicious and they think on uh, i mean the default assumption is your drug causes toxicity and the toxicologist has to uh, determine what toxicity it is by uh, conducting a range of toxicology studies uh, ranging from the acute to um, uh, uh, 28 day study 90 day study all the way to the uh, two gener i mean uh, all the way to two year carcinogenesis studies so while conducting the study so at the end of the uh, uh, completion of the study so he has established so what is the toxicity observed in a study so which doses uh, causes the toxicity as well as uh, whether the uh, ob observations are uh, reversible or not and what is the adverse implication for the preclinical species and uh, wh what is the outcome uh, we can expect in the human or animal health so to address all these questions so pathology play a, a very important role and the toxicology depend upon the pathology data in, uh, report and interpretation to arrive at no observed adverse level in a, any toxicity study so understanding some basic uh, principles in the pathology will help the toxicologist to, to interpret the pathology data and ultimately arrive at defendable noel so so in this uh, uh, today's program so we are going to i mean uh, Uh, discuss about some basic uh, principles in pathology as well as organ toxicity so pathology by definition it is the science of uh, cause and effects of disease so especially the study of functional biochemical and physiological alteration of cells tissues and organs that causes the disease actually pathology is both art and science so art means actually a lot of colors involved from grass pathology to histopathology so the pathologist has to interpret the binding base uh, based on the uh, the color variations uh, whether it is grass or histopathology so that's why it is called as art as well as uh, science so the lot of interpretation involved to arrive at diagnosis and uh, the toxicology pathology is the discipline which integrate both toxicology and pathology and it is performed in an experimental uh, settings so uh, it, it is the study of molecular cellular and uh, tissue or organismal response to the toxic and exposure so it helps to understand what changes occur in the animal model after exposure to a, a testatum or toxigen and the, whether the findings are testatum related or not and the observed findings are adverse or adaptive and whether the findings are reversible or not and so what is the outcome of this finding to predict the human uh, or animal health so uh, this diagram i mean uh, most of us are familiar with that so the drug development uh, it takes uh, uh, about 8 uh, to 15 years or more than that and uh, this uh, uh, this uh, cycle is actually broadly divided into two phases drug discovery and development and the toxicology pathologists play a role uh, right away right stop from the beginning of the uh, uh, drug discovery all the way to the uh, uh, 
non clear and all the way to the uh, phase 1 phase 2 and phase 3 three studies so in the initial phase uh, they involve in the exploratory studies uh, uh, which is mainly focused on the establishment of efficacy and uh, safety liabilities so after the initial uh, discovery phase the compound the lead compounds move to the uh, preclinical phase where in the glp uh, toxicology studies are conducted and uh, see uh, the glp toxicology studies actually play a major role in deciding the dose for the first in human uh, dose study that is phase 1 clinical trials well but the, while the phase 1 uh, phase 2 and phase 3 clinical trials run uh, the uh, uh, toxicology stud studies also running in parallel it's based on the duration of the clinical trial uh, so that uh, duration of the preclinical toxicology studies either equal or more than the duration of the uh, toxicology studies so the toxicology as well as pathology play the role uh, during drug discovery and uh, uh, drug development so uh, so we involved in the entire uh, life cycle of the compound development so what is the exact role of pathology during drug discovery so as i said earlier so as establishing efficacy and uh, say identifying safety liability is the uh, primary task in the drug uh, drug discovery also to differentiate between the on target effect and or off target uh, effect in the animal models and identifying the biomarkers uh, to be monitored in the uh, clinical trials as well as identifying the biomarkers for the safety and uh, to help the toxicologists to select the relevant species for the further uh, preclinical toxicology studies so drug development it involves the characterization of the safety profile of the compound under investigation and conduct the risk assessment based on drug uh, benefit versus uh, uh, safety liabilities to the intended population so the role of pathology involves actually the uh, evaluation of uh, clinical pathology and anatomic pathology data and to see whether those uh, observed findings are related to test item or not and the pathology data helps in the establishment of uh, no observed adverse effect level which is used to calculate the safe st starting dose in the clinical trials so in the pathology data actually uh, so the no uh, adverse effect level is not uh, i mean defined in the pathology data so what pathology data i mean the report says is that uh, dose at which the you can see the adverse effect level in a study the toxicologist has to actually inter interpret and integrate the findings to the uh, in life findings and arrive at the no observed effect level so so the toxicologists actually you guys are very well uh, i mean expert in conducting the studies of in life phase so you design the studies and conduct the uh, in life phase of the study and uh, take the measurements of uh, in life phase like body weight food consumption and uh, clinical signs so at the end of the um, in life phase uh, the study moves to the pathology phase so i'm going to give an overview so what we do it uh, in the pathology phase so the pathology phase can be broadly divided into clinical pathology and anatomic pathology the clinical pathology starts with this uh, collecting of the samples so the animals are generally fostered for overnight so to avoid any variabilities the hematology clinical chemistry uh, and urinalysis samples are collected and submitted to the clinical pathology team for uh, further processing uh, and uh, data collection so the data is actually uh, uh, compiled verified and submitted to the pathologists for interpretation so once the, uh, the samples are collected for clinical pathology then the animal move to the uh, necropsy phase wherein the animals are uh, euthanized using uh, isoflurane it's a, it's actually human sacrifice uh, so the animals uh, following deep uh, anesthesia the animals are exsanguinated to remove the blood and um, uh, animals are examined for the presence of grass pathology finding uh, by the study pathologist and uh, for external and internal lesions followed by the organs are collected and the organs mean for weighing or sin for weighing and uh, so that um, necropsy data is again submitted to the pathologist for evaluation so after a sufficient period of fixation the uh, samples are again taken for the processing so it starts with the uh, histology the next phase wherein the samples are further processed like tissue trimming processing sectioning staining so these activities are done by a uh, trained technician and the slides are produced so the slides are checked for the quality uh, for the presence of any artifact then it is submitted to the pathologist so pathologist has to integrate the uh, i mean he has to evaluate clinical pathology and the necropsy cross pathology parameters before going for the evaluation of the uh, microscopic uh, findings then he prepare the uh, pathology report and uh, if there is any peer review peer review will be performed otherwise the report is submitted to the uh, toxicologist for uh, interpretation in the uh, toxicology report 
So let me quickly go over what are the parameters uh, evaluated in a uh, clinical pathology phase. So clinical pathology phase, it includes hematology, clinical chemistry, uh, coagulation analysis and urinalysis. In the uh, hematology parameters like uh, hematology parameters like RPC parameters, uh, hematocrit uh, pa and uh, PCVs. Uh, hemoglobin, uh, WBC parameters uh, like differential leukocyte count, platelet and uh, reticulocyte count. Uh, so these uh, parameters are included in the hematology panel. And the coagulation panel includes uh, prothrombin time, activated partial thromboplastin time and uh, uh, fibrinogen. So urinalysis it involves both uh, color volume, specific gravity and the parameters like uh, glucose, bilirubin, pH. And uh, 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 the samples are also centrifuged and examined under microscope for the presence of uh, cast crystals and uh, RBCs and WBCs, etc. The clinical uh, chemistry panel includes the biomarkers for the liver injury, kidney injury, muscle injury. So like the parameter like a AST, ALT, and GGT, ALP, and bilirubin for liver injury markers. And the kidney injury markers include burn and creatinine, so although they, these are not uh, that sensitive, so we can see these changes in the advanced stage of kidney damage. So, so still these parameters are routinely included in the evaluation of uh, um, uh, kidney injury. The muscle injury parameters include, include uh, creatinine kinase, LDH, and the electrolytes, glucose, proteins, cholesterol. So you can see the, uh, the parameters actually it's uh, very vast and uh, so, uh, so these uh, parameters will help in the overall interpretation of the uh, compounds for the um, safety liability. So uh, after uh, clinical pathology as I mentioned uh, um, it goes to the necropsy phase wherein uh, uh, signal examination followed by the organ weight. So the organ weight, uh, actually all the major organs are uh, weighed like liver, kidney and heart, brain, testes and uh, the organs of uh, uh, endocrine system, reproductive system, lymphoid organs are weighed. Uh, it's actually one of the very sensitive parameters to evaluate actually. So uh, uh, organ weight, it's not only absolute organ weight, so we are actually calculating our organ weight to body weight ratio as well as brain weight ratio which will help in the interpretation of the organ weight data. And say for example some of the um, uh, weight changes like liver weight changes uh, which, which are predictive of the hepatocellular hypertrophy changes up to 20% uh, uh, relative to the uh, body weight. So most of the times we may not able to see the histopathology finding but still uh, this is an indicative of an enzyme induction. So if the relative change is more than 20% we can able to see the uh, microscopic findings. And uh, uh, heart weight uh, is also an indicator. So the in increase in ha heart weight may be sometimes the only indicator for the um, uh, my myocardial hypertrophy because it's uh, sometimes it is difficult to identify myocardial hypertrophy under microscope. So these are the list of organs uh, collected in a uh, routine toxicology study. It's about uh, 45 to 50 organs are collected. And all um, from head to tail, it's, I should say all the organs from all the animals in the study are collected and preserved. So it's include uh, from organs of uh, digestive system, respiratory system, nervous system, uh, urinary system, endocrine organs, reproductive organs, lymphoid organs, uh, musculoskeletal system. Each and every organ are collected, preserved and evaluated in control and high dose group followed by the lower dose groups and recovery groups. So the histology process is uh, like uh, tissue trimming, processing, embedding, and sectioning and training. So I would like to emphasize on the tissue trimming part. So the tissue trimming is done according to the standard guidelines. So we follow the um, uh, RENI guidelines, so which uh, specifically mention about how to collect each and every organ, and uh, how to trim the organ, how to orient, how to uh, which phase we have to embed. So all the details are actually given in the guidelines. So this is, these guidelines are followed for the uniformity. And so before evaluation, now the uh, slides are produced and uh, sent to pathologist for evaluation. So pathologist straight away, he will not start the slide evaluation. So before evaluating the slides, he will uh, review with the data of in life phase, like uh, um, body weight change, food consumption, and uh, toxicokinetic data, which is very much uh, helpful uh, to see if there is any sex specific changes in the exposure. and. Um, uh, he has to also review the clinical pathology data like uh, hematology coagulation as I mentioned earlier as well as the necropsy data and so 
so this will give an idea about for the uh, uh, pathologist so what to look for in the uh, histopathology slides so there will not be any surprises to him most of the time so uh, the evaluation is not done in a blinded fashion so most people ask why don't you do the evaluation in a blinded manner so th actually the evaluation is not to test the pathologist's ability actually the the objective of the study is to characterize the toxicity so to do characterize appropriately characterize the toxicity the pathologist has to given all the information of in life phase as well as uh, uh, the pathology data so which will help him to comprehensively what to look for in the uh, uh, histopathology slides so in uh, the generally the evaluation is done control animals followed by the high dose group and it may be either animal by animal or organ by organ so the target organs whatever identified the higher dose groups will be evaluated at the lower dose groups and uh, as well as the recovery groups to see the um, whether the changes are recover recoverable or not and so the pathologists uh, often use these standardized terminologies actually which is recommended for uh, send conversion of the data so send uh, i mean toxicologists might be aware of uh, what is mean by send the preclinical -pre data set has to be converted into send format and uh, it should be submitted to the fda so fda will do their own analysis using their uh, softwares so to have to submit the data in send format and the uh, actually the standardized terminologies has to be used across the studies so for this purpose uh, uh, pathologists follow in hand uh, terminologies for recording their findings so it, in hand actually it is uh, it is like international harmonization of uh, nomenclature for diagnostic criteria for rat and mice so this uh, guidance was developed by the society of uh, toxicology pathology across the globe so for each and every organ the diagnostic termino terminologies are defined and listed in the website as well as the, the, um, the terminologies are uh, published as well. So the information is available to the pathologist. So pathologists used to refer this uh, guideline for uh, using the appropriate terminologies in a, a non-clinical study. It not only lists the uh, terminologies, it gives the actually uh, what is the diagnostic criteria uh, for each and every findings and what are the differential diagnostic criteria. So this is very much a useful tool for the pathologist to record the findings. So uh, let me go over uh, about in brief about so what happened uh, at the cellular level when the animal is exposed to the toxicant. So although there are so many lesions uh, I mean described in the um, uh, guidelines, the, all these lesions can be broadly uh, categorized into these categories like degeneration or necrosis or inflammation, hypertrophy, atrophy, hyperplasia, metaplasia, neoplasia, it may be either benign or malignant. So these are actually very broad uh, classification of the findings. All the findings most of the time can be categorized into these uh, uh, basic findings. So what happens in the cell uh, actually after exposed to the toxicant or any injurious stimuli? So normal cell is under the homeostasis. So homeostasis is the normal stage. So when there is an exposure to the toxicant, the cell try to adapt itself so that it can survive in the new environment. Uh, by retaining its uh, functional ability. So if the adaptation capab uh, capability is exceeded, then cell injury occurs. Otherwise, uh, sometimes the toxin can directly cause the cell injury. The cell injury actually, it is again, uh, it may be reversible or ir irreversible. So reversible injury in the sense, if the toxicant is removed or the duration of exposure is less, then the cell become normal, so it won't die. But uh, if, they, if there is continuous exposure to the toxicant, then the cells uh, will undergo, uh, it, it will go into the uh, irreversible phase, which is uh, necrosis. Or this, uh, the toxicant sometimes may directly cause the uh, uh, programmed cell death, which is called apoptosis. So let's see what's happening at the cellular level. See, this is the uh, individual cell with the nucleus and the nucleoli. These are mitochondria and lysosomes. and. Uh, um, rough endoplasmic reticulum. So when there is an injury, so the initial stage is the irreversible injury. Although it is uh, very difficult to detect at the mi microscopic level, so this is what happens. The cell started swelling in the reversible injury. So as a result of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, toxic and action on the multiple factors like mitochondria or protein synthesis, what happened is initially the, the ATP protection is affected. As a result, the ion channels which is responsible for the sodium and potassium pump it is getting affected. As a result, intracellular sodium starts accumulates. So due to that, the in extra, extracellular water coming inside the cell which causes the cell swelling. It is not only cell swelling, it, uh, the, 
in a intracellular organelles also getting swell like mitochondria and ribosome started enlarging and water is coming inside. So if that uh, injury is removed then cell will, uh, will will back to normal. But if the injury is still persistent, the toxicon is exposed for a, a extended duration then it will enter into the uh, irreversible phase wherein the cell dies. Uh, ultimately the uh, cell membrane rupture and the contents are released into the uh, intracellular space which incite the inflammation and later on resolution. So these are all the changes which occur, uh, I mean sequence of events occur during the cell injury. The first thing is to happen is the loss of injury, loss of function to the cell. So, and this is actually still, it's a reversible stage. If the uh, toxicant is removed, the, uh, the cell will come back to the normal and started function. And uh, the next phase is, I mean, if the injury is not reversible, then it, it enters in the cell death. And after cell death, it takes some time to get the ultrastructural changes, which is followed by the microscopic change and the gross morphologic change. So when you see the gross morphologic change at the necropsy, lot has happened already at the cellular level. So you can see the microscopic findings. But in some acute studies, the toxicologists experience because animal dies uh, immediately after the testatum administration. When it is submitted to the pathologist, pathologists find nothing because the toxicity occurs at the molecular level, the animal dies immediately. So we cannot expect any uh, gross or microscopic changes when the animal dies immediately. So some of other basic changes uh, like, uh, so see, this is a normal epithelium, uh, the nucleus, uh, nucleol, nucleus followed by the cytoplasm, and this is the normal one. So there are some uh, exposure to the toxicant cause may cause atrophy. Atrophy means if the cell size decreases, so organ size decreases, organ weight decreases. And uh, this is actually hypertrophy, hypertrophy in the sense enlargement of the cell. So here organ size increases and organ weight increases. And hyperplasia is actually increasing the number of cells. And uh, metaplasia is conversion of one adult cell is replaced with another adult uh, cell wherein uh, the cell can withstand the uh, new environment. It can, it can survive uh, in the toxic and exposure. The example being exposure to the smoke. Exposure to the smoke causes uh, squamous metaplasia of the uh, tracheal epithelium. So although the uh, I mean cells survive, so it lost the function of uh, mucociliary function, so ultimately it may prone to more infections. So the next phase is the dysplasia, which is actually a precancerous condition and which will progress into the neoplasia. So these are all some basic changes occurring at the epithelial level. So let's see, uh, the pathologist has evaluated the uh, um, a study and he has tabulated the um, histopathology findings. Let's see how the pathologist interpret his own data. So, so these are all the questions asked during the interpretation of the pathology data, like is it a notable finding and whether the finding is test item related or background, is it adverse in the preclinical species or is it ad uh, adverse or relevant to the human beings. So is it a notable finding? So it may be an artifact as well. So processing or handling related artifacts sometimes have a, uh, happen in the tissues which uh, interfere with the evaluation. Sometimes we may think the artifacts are real lesions. So we have to actually, and the pathologist has to differentiate between the artifact and real lesions. So some of the examples are like evacuation of the white matter of the brain, so which may happen due to the um, over-processing in the alcohol, which leads to evacuation of the brain. Sometimes it is difficult to differentiate between the real and artifact. And delay in tissue collection and uh, uh, improper fixation also leads to some of the artifacts. So this is an example of uh, uh, handling artifacts. So this is a picture of the brain. And you can see these are all the normal neurons. And these neurons are actually very dark. So sometimes, uh, I mean, pathologists may think this may be due to the uh, necrosis, but really this is not actually a, a real lesion. This is an artifact caused by the excessive handling of the brain. So the, re the real lesion looks like this. So the cells are like, uh, if there is a necrosis, neuronal necrosis, the cells will look like this, like the cytoplasm will be hyperiosinophilic and uh, there will be pyknosis of the nucleus. So this is the real lesion. So, so he has to differentiate between the artifact and real lesion. This is another one, as I mentioned earlier, this is an uh, artifact evacuation caused in the white matter of the brain due to the uh, excessive processing time in the uh, alcohols. And this is a true evacuation caused by a toxicant. So how to differentiate the thing is actually, so you have to compare between the control and uh, uh, 
are treated uh, animals. So sometimes you may not see the vacuolation in the control. Yeah, even it may be due to the artifact also. So to avoid this situation, actually we have to um, mix the tissues of control as well as the treated groups and we have to process the uh, together so that if there is any artifact induced due to processing you can see in the control also otherwise what uh, most laboratory follow is to adopt a separate processing um, uh, program for the nervous tissue so that such evacuations can be avoided